So it's important to know what the multiplicative factors of a polynomial are. And so to define this, we say that if P and R and Q are all uh, polynomials over some field F, and P is equal to R times Q, uh, where are you? Then we say that um, P factors into R and Q. And that R and Q are factors of P. Okay. And so Proposition 411, which somehow you'd think would be more informative, says that if we have um, a polynomial and a scalar from our field, lambda, then the zeros of p correspond to factors of p. So in other words, if, uh, oops, p of, then p of lambda is equal to zero, if and only if z minus lambda is a factor of p. Okay, and so a little bit more can be said. So we can say that uh, p of z then looks like z minus lambda times q um, for some polynomial q. So <clears throat> if we have some pro um, polynomial P, uh, which is, um, uh, well, I guess it could be a constant. So if, um, yeah, so if P is our polynomial, Uh, has degree, whoops, has degree m, and m is at least zero. So in other words, um, we're just ruling out uh, p is not the the zero function because remember that has degree minus infinity for some weird reason. Um, for a good weird reason, but nonetheless a weird reason. Then P has at most M zeros in in F. And it's an item of interest to know whether or not it has exactly M. So for that we have another proposition and this this one is specific to uh, the case when the field is C so in this case uh, if we're looking at a polynomial over C and it has a strictly positive uh, degree then P has at least one zero in C. And so this is actually the, the tricky part to show. This uh, goes by the name most often, um, the fundamental theorem of algebra.
the thing that's used most often, well, oops, not algebraan, good God. Um, the fundamental theorem of algebra, the, the, the thing that's used most often is a corollary that follows from this basically immediately, which is that um, P factors because you can just, uh, as, a, as a product of linear terms like this. And this follows immediately from the, uh, the first part that I mentioned, um, uh, just, just by iteration. You, you just keep uh, saying, oh, P has at least one zero. Okay, well, if it has that one zero, then, then factor it out using uh, the part that we saw before. Uh, and now you've got something that has degree one less. Keep doing that. Eventually you get down to zero because you started with a finite number. Uh, therefore you're done. Boom. Um, and, and I should highlight right here that, that this M right here is non-coincidentally the same as that M right there. So <clears throat> if P uh, is a polynomial over C with degree M, then it has M zeros in C. Uh, counting multiplicity. So, so they may, might not all be distinct. Maybe I should, yeah, let me write that down. So, so these are not necessarily uh, distinct roots that we have right here. So this one is the content of what the book calls 414. Oh, and as an example um, of, of why this is important, right? If you take something like um, x squared plus one, here's a, a polynomial over uh, R, but it has no root in R, right? Because in order for it to have a, a root, you would be trying to solve x squared plus one equals zero, or x squared equals minus one, and we know there's no solutions to that in R. So, um, If you're in some other field, um, that the statement of uh, Prop 413 can fail. <clears throat>